Welcome back to another Met Boys video. So you clicked on this video because you have one month left to take the MCAT and it's not a lot of time, I know that, but if you follow this guide, you can get a pretty high score no matter what you started with. So for reference, I started with a 501 and I ended with a 517. So it's definitely a very helpful guide. So be sure to like and subscribe and watch till the end. Let's go. four things. We'll start off with what resources we use, then move on to the pre-MCAT prep phase, and then move on to the first 15 days and the last 15 days. Make sure you watch till the end so you get all the information you need. So let's first talk about the resources that you're going to use to study for the MCAT in one month. Unless you're Dr. House or something, you're probably not going to be able to get through the amount of content someone can do in about three months. So that's why we have to be smart about the way we study over this one month. True and yeah, that's pretty true. That's true and yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. And the first thing we have to address is cars because that's the most important section on the MCAT for a lot of people. Now, here are some of the resources that we used. We used Jack Weston, Exam Crackers, the Princeton Review, and of course, the AAMC materials that are absolutely necessary to do. So what we recommend is using a multitude of these types of sources and not just using one source. The reason for this is because you don't want to get used to the logic of one third party resource and not being able to apply it to the AMC or the actual MCAT. This is a big problem that a lot of students actually keep making. We actually have a whole video dedicated to the car section. So if you're looking for more advice, please check that out in the description below. For content review, except for cards and psychology, we actually use the Kaplan 7 book set for the rest of the subjects. For psychology, obviously there's a 300 page document that you can find on Reddit created by MCAT Bros. It's amazing, but there's not enough time to go over it. We actually use the condensed 55 page document that we created. It's the same thing created by MCAT Bros just in 55 pages. And that actually was very helpful for us because uh, it, it saved us time and we were able to get through the content very quickly. And of course, we use the AMC questions and the UWorld question pack for all of the subjects. So now let's move on to pre-MCAT prep. So even though you only have one month to study for the MCAT, you could always start doing small things before you start your intense studying for that one month. For example, you can start recreationally reading for the car section, or you could start reading more scholarly articles for all of the sections that have graphs and different information that you have to analyze. And we have a lot more of these examples in our two month study schedule video. So make sure you check that out. And finally, before you start your MCAT prep, you want to take one diagnostic MCAT. So you know where your baseline is and you can take this through a variety of third parties and also AAMC. Now that we've addressed all of our resources, let's break down the one month and we're going to start with the first 15 days. A general outline is that you're going to be practicing questions and doing content review at the same time. <laughs> and a lot of other schedules split this up, but since you only have a month, you're going to have to start doing those practice questions ASAP because you're going to want to start practicing applying your knowledge that you learned throughout your content review. Also for your content review, since the Kaplan books have about 12 chapters each, you're going to be studying from the five different books that we outlined. So this totals to about 60 chapters. If you want to get that done in 15 days, that means you'll have to do four chapters per day. And it does sound like a lot, but it is manageable. With your content review, I would recommend starting with what Kaplan has labeled high yield, because this is what's tested most heavily on the MCAT. For the 55 page document that we talked about, try to go through about five pages per day so that you can get all of the stuff done by that 15 day time limit. Instead of doing four chapters from the same textbook, try to do chapters from different textbooks. This is a technique known as interleaving. It's essentially helping you understand content and relating it to all of the other subjects that you've studied in a day. It'll actually be very helpful when you do practice questions because you're able to relate the content from different subjects and you'll be able to score better on your practice questions as well. Finally, you'll probably get really exhausted and bored studying one subject for so many hours in a day so it's important to mix things up and i'm sure the people doing physics can relate to this they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine in terms of practice and questions 
you're only going to focus on the AAMC questions because we don't have the time to put in other third party questions. For this reason, there are 780 questions that you have to finish on AAMC. And we're going to try to finish two thirds of these questions in the first 15 days. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. This means you have to do 520 questions or 35 questions every single day. And we recommend you do this after you finish your content review so you can get that active recall in and get that practice that you really need. When you're studying for cars, you're gonna to wanna to focus on three things, accuracy, endurance, and speed. For accuracy, you're gonna to wanna to spend the first few days just getting used to cars, doing about three passages per day untimed. This way, you'll only be focusing on understanding the passage and answering every single question you can with the maximum possible accuracy. After you get used to cars, you can start increasing the number of passages you do per day. So once you're at the end of the week, you should be used to cars and that's when you should increase the number of passages you do per day by one. So after the first week, you should be at four passages per day. What this will do is it'll help you build that endurance. The more passages you'll be able to do in a row, the better your score will be because you actually have to do nine passages straight on the car section. And I know it's really frustrating, but that's just how the MCAT car section is designed. Once you get used to that endurance aspect, you can start tightening the speed. You can start decreasing the amount of time you spend on your passages without sacrificing the accuracy. And hopefully by the end of the 15 days, you'll be at about five passages per day. After you finish content review, practice problems, and your cars practice, you should spend the last hour doing Anki. Yes, the infamous Anki. If you already don't know about it, it's a flashcard software, which is very popular among pre-meds and in medicine in general. And it helps you memorize all of those important terms that you're not able to memorize when you're doing practice questions or just passively going through your content. So it's a very important software and I think you should definitely spend your last hour doing that. I know this seems like a lot, but I'm sure you can do this. Let's look at what a day might look like using the schedule. So let's say you wake up at seven, you start, you get ready, and then you move on to one hours of cars prep, which should be good for any type of passages you do. And then you move on to two hours of content review where you're doing two chapters in those two hours. After you're done that, you can have lunch and de-stress, take your time. It doesn't have to be very short. And then you come back, do two more hours of content review with two more chapters. And then you move on to the questions, which should take only an hour since there are 35 questions and reviewing them. And then you finish off with an hour of Anki plus studying the psychology document provided by MCAT pros. I know you're probably horrified after listening to that daily breakdown, but trust me, the schedule is doable. And if you don't get distracted, you'll be able to finish it in the exact time frame we gave you. To prevent distractions, what I recommend is to put your phone into a completely different room. A lot of people do get distracted by phones, ourselves included. So if you are one of those types of people, hopefully this will help you out so that you won't get those texts and they won't bother you. Also, I'd recommend just making sure that you have a study desk, a study environment, anything possible to optimize your studying for the hours that you'll need. If you are feeling unmotivated, the most important thing to remember is that the MCAT is the biggest exam of your entire life as a pre-med student. So you don't want to have to retake it. It's a seven hour, 30 minute exam. It's absolutely a nightmare. So please remember that and try your best to get everything done in this one month. After you're done all of your review for the day, which would be around 5 or 6 p.m., I highly recommend you put everything away and go and do something that you love to do. For example, if you wanna to go to the gym, go to the gym, go outside, um, spend time with family, friends, um, play the guitar, something like that. Something that isn't studying, something that isn't the MCAT. Try to do things that are very different from what you, you just spent eight to 10 hours doing in the day. And we highly recommend this because your next day is very important and you need to be ready for the next day. If you're going over the five or 6 p.m. mark, just remember that you're doing something inefficiently. On the last day of your 15 days, you want to make sure that you take a full length MCAT. For this reason, you're going to be taking FL1 or the first full length that AMC provides because it's going to be essential to find out where your content gaps are, what you need to practice in the next 15 days. Here's my score at this point. Now, let's move on to the last 15 days. 
What you're going to want to be doing during this time is focusing all of your efforts on completing the remaining three full lengths by the AAMC. You're going to want to do one on the fourth day, one on the eighth day, and the final one on the twelfth day. This gives you about three days to sort of just relax, wind down, and mentally ready yourself for the MCAT. You don't want to be stressing yourself out right before the MCAT. That is a massive mistake, all right? Okay. Also, this will give you about four days in between each MCAT to brush up on any content areas that you need to improve your score and overall just review the MCAT in the best possible way. Like Dima mentioned earlier, you should be focusing on your content gaps in these few days. You should spend at least two hours doing them. Write them down whenever you find it in a practice problem or something, write it down and make a checklist and check it every time you review it. This is very important because you don't wanna make the same mistake on the actual test day. So spend at least two hours of the day reviewing the content gaps. Next, you will finish the remaining 260 questions from the AAMC MCAT bundle. This means you have to do 17 questions every single day until your actual MCAT. This will help you practice a lot more active recall rather than just passive reading that you're doing by reviewing the content. And this technique is backed by so much research. That's why you need to get this practice in. And if you want even more practice, you could add in some UWorld and make it a lot better. In terms of cars, for these last 15 days, you're going to want to keep doing those five passages per day while increasing those by about one every single week. But also, you're going to want to be placing more emphasis on the speed component. And what I mean by this is to decrease the amount of time you take to do each passage without sacrificing accuracy. This is probably the hardest part of cars, and this is personally the part that I struggled with the most. And to do this, you can also take a look at our previous CARS videos like we mentioned earlier. The reason this is so important is because if you are able to get your passage time down to about 8 minutes per passage, you're going to have a lot of time to cover any difficult passages you might encounter or any questions that will throw you off. And trust me, this will happen. You're going to have to prepare for the unexpected on your actual MCAT exam. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So the more prepared you are, the better your exam will go. Trust me on that. One very important thing you need to do in the last 15 days is to memorize all of the equations and formulas for physics, general chemistry, biochemistry, or even in biology. Write them down every single day. For example, I had a whiteboard and I would write down all of the equations and even cycles and would write them down every single day. You're not allowed to take a formula sheet to the MCAT. So remember that in these last 15 days, you need to be memorizing all of those equations, write them down every single day. Next, you're just going to keep doing Enki because Enki is a very efficient way to go over a lot of content. And it's also active recall, so you want to make sure that you keep doing that. So what will your day look like? You're gonna start off your day by probably doing an hour of cars, let's say. Then you're gonna move into two hours of reviewing your content gaps and sort of improving upon those that you identified from your practice MCATs. After that, you're probably gonna to wanna to take your lunch break and just relax for a bit. And then you're gonna to wanna to do your 17 questions. And after that, you're finally gonna to wanna to finish up with your two hours of Enki. And once you've done all of this, you can safely say that you'll be prepared to take your actual MCAT And just for context, here are my practice scores. With each full length I took, I progressively increased my score, which is a great sign. If you aren't seeing that, then you're probably gonna have to adjust something in your schedule, potentially increase the amount of time you're reviewing a specific subject, depending on which section you need more work in. So just remember that this process is very dynamic and you're gonna have to change your preferences according to what your score is. Ultimately, I scored pretty well on the real MCAT, and I hope you can do the same as well. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you got something helpful out of it, please like it, please subscribe. We also made a two month and three month study schedule if you have some more time to allocate, and you can find it in the description below or just at the end of the video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and good luck studying, it'll definitely pay off.